I'm Harald Hofen and I've been here for 20 years on the grounds, uh -huh. working with the garden and teaching, teaching and training apprentices. Uh -huh. And uh, maybe we can go to the beginning of how you got here in the first place. I mm -hmm. think that might be mm -hmm. very good to find out. Were you in biodynamics already? Yes. yes, I did my training in Germany for four years. And there I met Cynthia, my wife, and she was doing her uh, therapeutic me training at the time. Mm -hmm. And when she was done with her training, she wanted to go back and work therapeutically. So we joined a medical center here in Fair Oaks, Raphael Association, uh -huh. and worked there for, well, I worked there for 10 years or so. Mm -hmm. And we had to move the, the, the garden from its location a mile down the road. And the college was, had just purchased the 10 acres here. Uh -huh. and so I was invited to have the garden here. And for a while, the garden was done more or less jointly by Raphael Association and, uh, and Rudolf Steiner College. And then in the year 2000, I moved fully also um, fiscally over to the college. I had been teaching here already pretty much from the start mm -hmm. on the side besides my work for growing vegetables and herbs. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then in 2000, I shifted over. Switched all over. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit more about the Raphael Association, yeah. what mm -hmm. it is? Because, yes. yeah, that yes, would so be it's good. a medical center that was started by uh, Dr. Christa van, van Tellingen. And she had the vision of having not only working alone, but working in community. Uh, so, so we joined it, uh, Cynthia, as a eurythmist. And there was a, a, her husband was a massage therapist. Uh -huh. And then a pharmacist joined, so we had a pharmacy. And then there was a care house for a while. It was actually quite an exciting work. Uh, but very ambitious with doing it socially the proper way. And ultimately we had to and I think people in part had burnout from uh -huh. the intense demands of what we tried yes. to do. Yeah, and yeah. the physician, uh, she returned back to Holland eventually. I see. Is that uh, where the Raphael Foundation comes from? Uh, the Raphael Foundation is sort of a leftover of the property that was where the work took place. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, uh, how how many acres is uh, does Rudolf Steiner College have now? No, Thirteen acres. And how many acres do you actually uh, do gardening on? About three, uh, fully, and then I use some more areas. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. For sheds and things like that. Right, and also for seasonal pasture or so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about? Uh, tell me a little bit about how you handle the cow, because I've mm -hmm. seen the cow on the mm -hmm. property. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the cow has been a great addition. We've had the cows for almost 10 years. The same cow? Well, no, actually her mom. <laughs> uh, and it was very difficult to get started because I just got one cow and cows are herd beings. And yeah. she was very unhappy. Yeah. And it only became better when I invited another cow, a heifer, who was actually her sister, oh, yeah. uh, to be on the land. And then when she gave birth and everything was fine. So um, they are on the pasture and they uh, are a great addition here to the work. Yeah. Because they bring this soul element um, and of course this transformation of uh, grass in a way that no other animal could do. Well, yeah. So we can make our own horn manure preparation now, which is great yeah. addition, really. Yeah, because you don't remove the horns. No, 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 no. 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 But we, I mean, we had before we filled horns from other cows. Yes, of course, you have to get them right. some, some, somewhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. So mm -hmm. maybe now we can go a little bit further back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you were a little boy, did you know that you had something to do with the, the land and did that draw you? Yeah, I always had something to do with the land, so I was always out outside. I didn't spend much time inside, but I didn't know that I would get into farming. Um, I just couldn't sit on a desk or anything. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes, so I always enjoyed being outside, and uh, I did some gardening. My mother grew all the food for the family, mm -hmm. and then later, actually... Where, where was this? There's in Aachen, outside of Aachen, okay. in Rhineland in Germany. Uh -huh. So, and uh, then my mother later on, once I've, uh, after I left home, 
she started a market garden and friends of ours were familiar with biodynamics and so she did it biodynamically and I watched it and, and then I really got excited Yeah. and then I said mm, maybe I would take this over and apprenticed eventually and did not stay there though. <laughs> no, but you yes. but you're still doing the same biodynamic mm -hmm. gardening. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, um, in other words, uh, you 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 grew up mm -hmm. and you ha found the way. into when was it when you started with the biodynamics? Mm -hmm. I was, uh, I think, twenty six. I was twenty six, and I had been traveling a lot and trying to find really what to do, and yeah. I didn't find it and. Yeah. Until I finally realized I should be doing this as was best, yeah. was suiting me best. Yeah. yeah. And and coming to America, mm -hmm. it must have been a big change for you. Uh, it was not too big of a change. I had hitchhiked here a few years before. Ah, so you were a little so bit I was familiar. So I was familiar with it and yes, so it was not too hard. So what about uh, the garden now and mm -hmm. the biodynamics and mm -hmm. the students? Tell me a little bit about mm -hmm how that goes, what, how do you actually uh, approach it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe first um, the garden is carried at this point through the CSA, the Community Supported Agriculture Project right. that we have. Mm -hmm. So this gives an income that secures the, the future of this place because the college could not just have a beautiful, big, huge place exactly uh, sort of without any income from it right so that's the first thing so we have the CSA and it maybe with maybe you can yes. for those people who don't know mm -hmm. what yes. a CSA oh, is yeah. Uh, yeah. maybe you can briefly explain what right. it, what it right. is yes a CSA is a system where we grow food for a given community of people who are interested in this food and they make a commitment towards the farm and we make a commitment towards them that we provide all the food they need in a given you know, time to get, have a community that we can sustain mm -hmm. so they get the food from the garden and at the same time they support this healing work for the land. Exactly. Yeah. And so we have uh, 70 shares now, 50 regular and 20 large, so um, quite a number of people receive the benefits from this land. Mm -hmm. And um, so I do this with four apprentices. I've been uh -huh. training apprentices since the start here for 20 years. And um, so this is a wonderful way for the apprentices to learn. Yeah. They are in the, they are with me uh, in the garden, but then they also take classes. Right. I take this, I uh, teach this workshop series or a good number of the classes in there. So they get this, they take us Brian Gray, the human being and the stars. Mm -hmm. We do the agricultural lectures by Rudolf Steiner and there are other things that they get to take. And so how they long are, do they training. normally? How long does a it? A year. They, they stay mm -hmm, for a year. Mm -hmm. right, right. And they live at the college or they outside? They live here directly. We have a we we're renting a space just um, yeah directly adjacent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that they can, because they also have to live somewhere. Right. Right. Yes. Right. So with the college, uh, we are renting the space, and so they can be living there. And and how many normally do you have? Four. Four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you have to have them to work and you also... Right. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so this works quite well. And so we do the bulk of the work and make sure that something is in the distribution shed, the vegetables are there. Exactly. And yeah. then besides that I do teaching uh, in the workshop series, but also some in the foundations here. Right. When the students arrive, it's good for them to be, uh, if you will, uh, have a chance to get grounded on mm -hmm. the land. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's good for them to know about gardening too. Uh, they may be later in a school where they want to have a school garden, so it gives them actually a good way of being uh, in a healthy environment. And yeah. then of course the students walk daily, if they are living in the dorms, they walk daily through the garden and experience this and are surrounded by these growth forces. Exactly, yeah. And it makes quite a difference for the whole campus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, people just love to walk through the garden. Yes. I mean, you can go along the driveway, but it's mm -hmm. much more pleasant to go mm -hmm. through the garden. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, maybe you can tell me a little bit about the flow form that you have in the mm -hmm. garden. Mm -hmm. Where does it come from and uh, right. how right. did it start? 
Yes, the flow forms were uh, made by Jennifer Green from from um, flow in Maine. Yes, research in, mm -hmm. in Maine, but a Waterville or something yes. like that. Mm -hmm. And she worked with uh, she did research water research, and then uh, made these forms that were developed by John Wilkes uh, of England, who did this in conjunction with uh, with um, Theodor Schwenk. Right. So they made these to revitalize water and they are both aesthetically pleasing but also they have a real effect of uh, stimulating water flow and bringing the water into movement which it naturally wants to take and which is meandering. Yes. Going back. Yes. No cell phones here. That's great. And people are working in the garden. And this is how it goes. Water doing you with me. Making a figure eight. And so it's a wonderful thing to have. Yeah. We use this water when we stir up the preparations. Oh yes. So the water is much more alive than otherwise the city water that we have to use. Right. Yeah. 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 Because you connect it to the city water right. for the whole right. place. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. not well water yeah. or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, um, uh, the work that Francesca does must uh, speak also to uh, using the water in a very different way, making it alive. Mm -hmm. Are you aware mm -hmm. of... Uh, I've heard project? about it. I don't know that much about it yet, uh, mm -hmm. what he has. This is also new, I think, that he works with mm -hmm. water. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know as much about it yet. Mm -hmm. I, th I think I've heard that he has sort of made some sort of mixing device. Yes, yes. Similar to the, uh, what was it, the... The oloid. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the yeah. way that they can uh, mix things that are highly volatile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So are you familiar uh, with uh, the work of Theodor Schwenk? Uh, in other words, have you been there? No, no. But actually I've read uh, about the work. Yeah, yes. yeah, because mm -hmm. I mean that's wonderful the way that uh, we, sh we should have to do something with the water because right. it sure is dead when we get it in the taps. Right, right, yeah. yeah. And I, I would have loved to have more water features here. Yeah. It was not so easy. Well, I mean, you have to have finances for it too. Of and, course, yeah. Um, but also, there are certain restrictions. I would have liked to have more of a pond collecting water that comes. Yeah. That collects here, but we couldn't do that. Yeah, yeah, 